uh, greetings and salutations. Um, sorry I haven't posted in a while. Um, also maybe sorry for uh, posting at all. Hopefully this video will be of a higher quality. I kind of want to talk about what going deeper means within learning and definitions of, of deep learning. So most people know implicitly the difference between shallow and deep learning. One is characterized by its relative shortness. The other is as deep as we want to go, really, through months, years, or even a whole lifetime of practice and reflection. Most people, obviously, do learn every day from their friends, their peers, people at work, the occasional Wikipedia binge, which uh, might be thought of as another form of superficial learning, though it does go on a while and you click through to the many links. Uh, there's a really fun community dedicated to that, actually, to the, to the depth of Wikipedia, but that's all by the by. So, the kind of the definitions are kind of the point of this video, but to kind of introduce it, um, deep learning, some would say, is characterized by a focus on understanding and application, essential for the long-term retention and transfer of knowledge, while the other is characterized more by a tendency to focus on memorization and just reproduce information, leading to superficial understanding and often forgetfulness in many scenarios. One way, some would say, to promote deep learning is to provide opportunities for active and meaningful engagement with what is being learned, like full immersion in a language that comes from living in another country. So, um, what are some of the more influential ways going deeper has been thought about in learning? Well, uh, there's Bloom's Taxonomy, developed by the American educational psychologist Benjamin Bloom. And in this case, uh, other metaphors will do because it's not presented as going deeper as such, but a pyramidic structure. Uh, and he developed three such pyramidic models, hierarchical models, for the classification of um, educational learning objectives into levels of complexity and specificity. I'm just going to concentrate on the knowledge-based taxonomy or, or what is known as the cognitive domain. There's also one for emotion and action too. While hugely influential, some would say, suggest it's a flawed way of understanding what people and students understand. Um, it forms the basis of much assessment in the UK though, uh, including most GCSE criteria. So what's wrong with Bloom exactly? Uh, well, for one thing, it's an entirely subject-free and uh, skills-based way of understanding what people know. Uh, it treats all knowledge as if it was the same. Um, it may be the case that some things are actually intrinsically more difficult and complex to learn. Uh, and more often than not, teachers become teachers of Bloom's taxonomy and not teachers of their subjects. So this is one of the open secrets of GCC essay writing. Not so much about gaming the system, but understanding how students get awarded lots of marks. That is by doing evaluation first, where it's found at the summit of Bloom's taxonomy. So examiners are forced to give students more marks. Uh, and by doing about the evaluation, the implication is that they're doing everything else in Bloom's taxonomy. But this isn't necessarily the case. So they could have so-so knowledge uh, and their ability to apply and analyze uh, what they know may be limited to a few examples. So they might write one evaluative sentence in their whole GCSE response as a whole without any analysis leading up to this. So this is not necessarily um, evidence of deep learning. Uh, it's usually like they're speaking uh, or writing someone's evaluation back to the examiner, usually their teachers. So evaluations have to be reworded and deeper learning has to take place, you could say. What are some other ways of thinking about depth in learning? Of course, there's an irony in talking about deep learning in a short YouTube video, but nevertheless, I'll go on and summarize it as best as I can. So we have Professor Noel M. Whistle, a scientist by training who has been heavily involved in looking into the differences between deep and surface learning, which you can see here from one of his papers. There are also these definitions of surface, strategic and deep learning, which I've taken and developed from various sources. And John Hattie and Gregory M. Donoghue have developed their own model of learning which is quite interesting. You can see as we move from left to right, the learning shifts from the initial dispositions of the learner uh, to learn the information, uh, to organizing and self-regulating and seeing patterns that can be applied to new situations of the same kind. There's also Mickey Chi's ICAP framework, which identifies a shift in the learner's approach to learning from passive to active to constructive, and finally to the interactive.
At a broad overview, it's possible to identify three main academic groups that have tried to research deep learning, approaches to deep learning. The first being the Lancaster group led by Noel Imwhistle. A second group led by John Biggs amongst others, whose early work focused on explaining learning in terms of consistent traits within individuals such as personality and motivation, and less of an emphasis on contextual factors in the learning experience. It adopted quantitative methods, psychometric techniques, factor analysis, and then there became an increasing interest towards the complex interaction between students and their environments, so an emphasis on context. There is also a Swedish group led by Ferenc Martin, which uses naturalistic settings to approximate as much as possible a real educational situation like a classroom. There is an attempt to understand the individual participants' own perspectives of their situation rather than aiming for a perspective of an objective outside observer like a researcher. In 1976, a, a paper was published by Martin and Salto who analysed participants' explanations of how they took on a reading task and identified two distinctly different approaches. A deep group uh, focusing on understanding the text and a surface group mem which were memorizing the text more to answer questions. Um, they explored the relevance of task perception, task definition, uh, teaching methods and assessment procedures to the learning. Um, this more naturalistic approach led by Martin and others is more qualitative. Uh, Ferenc Martin is known for developing the approach known as phenomenography which is a mouthful but is actually very good at understanding students conceptions of phenomena um, and perhaps is um, overdue for a video from this channel. And thirdly there is the Richmond group led by Pask amongst others. Uh, their approach looks at comprehension, um, so how learners relate ideas and look for patterns and how they check evidence and examine their own logic. Um, a deep approach for them is defined by a search for understanding using whatever strategy can meet this end for the learner. In this diagram you can see three different researchers, the different terms they use to describe surface and deep approaches and the different data collection methods they used. So you'll see that Biggs use study process questionnaires and an M also use study inventories and sort of the commonalities they have between them. There was more that I want to discuss uh, in this video, including the role of things like memorization in other parts of the world, such as China, um, some of the role of context from Ramston, some studies from Martin and others, uh, as well as the role of variation and invariance in learning. Um, but maybe they'll have to wait for another video or not at all. Um, unfortunately, this video has been more of the reproduction of information that characterizes shallow learning, as I suggested at the beginning of this video. But I hope this video has served to illustrate what understandings of learning share in common. Um, in the next part of this video, I will also hope to talk about Biggs' idea of constructive alignment perhaps, if there's an appetite to create another video, and how this can be used too to bring out learning with a high cognitive level. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.